All right, so now we are on uh, FRQ number three. So I put away the calculator now. As usual, uh, any corrections are in the description below if I made any mistakes. Uh, company designed spinning toys using a family of functions where C is a positive constant. The figure above shows the region in the first quadrant bound by the x-axis in the graph for some C. Each spinning toy is in the shape of a solid generator when the region is revolved around the x-axis. Both x and y are measured in inches. Uh, okay, find the area of the region in the first quadrant bound by the x-axis in the graph of this for c is equal to 6. So we have y is equal to 6x square root of 4 minus x squared. Area of the region. So first we need to know what are the bounds here. What are my endpoints here? I need to know when this is equal to 0. That happens when x is 0 or 4 minus x squared is 0, which is uh, plus or minus 2. So this is probably 2 in the right side here. So to find the total area, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 2 of just the function um, of 6x square root of 4 minus x squared dx. Okay, Do this one. I'm going to do u substitution for the inside of the square because this is not a standard form that I can do. du is negative 2x dx. And um, I just divide this by negative 2 to get x dx. Then we're going to plug it into there. So that becomes uh, 6 times the integral of, for x dx, I put du over negative 2. And then this is square root of u. And this is really negative 3 integral u to the 1 half du, which is negative 3 u to the 3 halves um, over 3 halves, uh, which is negative 3 times 2 thirds u to the 3 halves which is negative 2u to the 3 halves. And let's do bound conversions. What's u of 0? u of 0 is equal to 4, and u of 2 is equal to 0. So we're going to do the bounds from uh, 4 to 0. We can swap the bounds and make it positive uh, u to the 3 halves from 0 to 4. And that's 2 times 4 to the 3 halves minus 0 to the 3 halves. That's just 0. Square root of 4 is 2, 2 cubed is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. Okay, uh, bound by the x-axis in the graph. Yeah, okay, I think I did that right. It is known that y equals that, and dy dx. For this particular spinning toy, the radius of the largest cross-sectional slice is 1.2 inches. What is the value for c? Ooh, okay. They're saying that the derivative is that. Okay for a particular radius of the largest cross-sectional area slice. Okay, so so what they're doing is it's, it's a little bit of a revolution. Like So this one, this is a little unusual. What they did is they're taking a cross-sectional slice. Because remember the volume of this is when you revolve it around the, uh, the, the x-axis. Okay, so you make like a little disk here, right? This is the disk method if you were trying to figure out the volume. They're not asking for the volume. They're asking where the maximum cross-sectional area is, where the biggest circle is. You can see in this picture, it's basically where the, the, the radius is the largest. So I want to maximize y, basically. Maximize y will give me the biggest cross-sectional disk um, around there. So I'm just trying to find where, where y is maximum. So where is y maximum? Y is y is maximum when dy uh, it's a local maximum when dy dx is zero. But they kind of gave this to you already. It's c times four minus two x squared over square root of four minus x squared. And that really happens when the numerator is zero, and we say c is non-zero. So that means four minus two x squared would have to be zero, or four is two x squared. Two is equal to x squared, so x would have to equal plus or minus square root of two. Now, we're in the positive x-axis, positive quadrant, so we really only care about positive square root of 2. Now, what are they saying? They're saying the largest cross-sectional circular slice is 1.2 inches. The radius is 1, is, is 1. 1.2. So we have to plug that back into y and say, like, remember the y, which is equal to the radius of the cross-section, it's the height of my little rectangle, is equal to c times square root of 2 times square root of 4 minus square root of 2 squared, and that has to equal 1.2. So this is c root 2. This is um, root 2, because root 2 squared is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. 
that equals 1.2. That means root 2 times root 2 is just 2. So 2c is 1.2, so c is equal to 0 0.6. Oops, that was a bad circle. Okay, that was that was kind of strange. Um, I would say that was a little bit a little bit tough there. <clears throat> for another spinning toy, the volume is 2 pi cubic inches. What is the value C for this spinning toy? So now I have to do the volume. So the volume integral. Um, remember what we're doing from our picture is we're making disks, right? And what's the volume of each disk? Or the dv is equal to pi r squared dx because the width of my little rectangles are dx here, and the height is uh, the y. Oh, so so the radius of this disk is just the y value. So it's pi. This is pi y squared dx. What is y squared equal to? So let's just write it down here. So dv, my little differential volume is pi y squared dx by square y. Uh, it's pi times c squared x squared, and then I just get rid of the square root here, is f times 4 minus x squared dx. Okay, so that's my little volume. And what I want to do, I want to do all the volumes from 0 to 2. Or I want to do the volumes of, I want to sum up the volume of every disk from 0 to 2. So I pull out a pi, uh, I pull out a c squared. And this becomes x squared times 4 minus x squared dx. So this is c squared pi integral 0 to 2. I just distribute the x squared. 4x squared minus x to the fourth dx. That's c squared pi. This is uh, times 4 thirds x cubed minus 1 fifth x to the fifth from x equals 0 to 2. So I oh, can't use a calculator for this. C squared pi, 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. 2 to the fifth is 32. So I can pull out a 32. 1 third minus 1 fifth. Let's just do that calculation. That's uh, 5 over 15 minus 3 over 15. And that's 2 over 15, I think. Yeah, so that's. 32 c squared pi times 2 over 15, uh, which is 64 c squared pi divided by 15. And they're saying that volume is 2 pi. So the pi's cancel. I can cancel a 2, make that 1, and make that 32. And then so c squared is equal to 15 over 32. And so c is equal to the square root of that. And if you really wanted to be kind of picky about it, you could write that as 4 root 2, which you could write as um, times root 2 over 2 is uh, root 30 over 8. For those purists in there, I would leave my answer like that. But if you really, really want to rationalize the denominator like that, then you could write it like that. Um, I think I did that right. That was kind of a lot. Um, if I find an error in there, I'm gonna try. I'm trying to get through these because I don't have a lot of time today. Um, if I find a mistake uh, in that computation, I'll uh, I'll I'll put a in a comment or in the description below.